Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Rocker Dog Podcast, the only podcast that talks to musicians about their canine companions. I'm your host, Tim Dill, flanked by my own canine companion, Charlie, and today we welcome to the show Norman Brannan, formerly of Texas Is The Reason and currently the touring guitarist for Thursday. He also recently revived his influential hardcore fanzine, Antimatter, on Substack, and this is his beloved rocker dog. So my rocker dog, and he was a rocker, he, he really was, uh, his name was Bozy. Um, he is no longer with us. He passed uh, well, about two years ago now, but it's really bizarre because his presence is still very much felt. And maybe this is like, I actually feel like social media has a, has a role in this. Okay. <laughs> I feel like social media, because, you know, Instagram was fairly new when we got Bozy. Mm -hmm. And I remember we actually found Bozy on social media. (laughs) He was, um, so he's a rescue dog. He was a dachshund. And he was being fostered by a friend of a friend. And so I'm in a a relationship. I've been in this relationship going on 18 years. Uh, When we got Bozy, we were probably eight or nine years into the relationship and I had spent eight or nine years trying to convince my partner that we needed a dog (laughs) and (laughs) and it was a major issue of mine because I'd had a dachshund before and um it I just I needed that I think dogs just tend to center me and Uh I I need also a little oxytocin fix uh (laughs) so one morning I was scrolling through then fairly new Instagram and a friend of mine posted this picture and said, my friend Gordon is fostering this dog. And his name at the time was Leonard Bonin. He was named after Leonard Cohen. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and so we, uh, I just saw him and I turned over to my partner and I was like, we're going to meet him today. Right. And surprisingly, he's like, okay. And we went to meet Leonard Bonin. And after maybe spending an hour with him, and and the intention wasn't to adopt him. It was really just to sort of meet him. Right. But he took to us instantly um, in a way that Gordon, who was fostering him, was kind of like, I don't know what you guys did. He's very happy to see you. (laughs) (laughs) And when we left uh, Gordon's house, I just turned to my partner and said, so we're adopting him, aren't we? And he was like, yeah. And that was how Bozy came. Now, this is your partner, John. Had he had any history with dogs? Did he grow up with dogs? He did have dogs growing up, but they were like gigantic dogs. So they sort of, you know... I think that he didn't have much of a role in taking care of them growing up. And so Mm -hmm. he didn't feel very connected to them. Um, And so it was really kind of a beautiful journey to watch his heart open with Bozy so much. Uh, I mean, they they say that uh, men become hotter when they become dads like to their partners, especially like, it's like, Oh my God, this whole new thing. It it was sort of like that. I was kind of like, Oh yes, daddy. (laughs) (laughs) It was just seeing his heart open and seeing him, you know, cause he didn't want a dog. That was the funny thing. And it was just, but Bozy had this just gigantic personality that really just completely stole his heart and he couldn't, he couldn't resist it anymore. He just had to give in. Yeah. You love to hear that, especially in, you know, times like today, I, I, I volunteer at a shelter and shelters across the country are overflowing. And obviously you want that dog person, but it's, we're always thinking like, how do we attract that person that doesn't know they're a dog person yet? And right. It's always interesting to see that transformation, but it's just so hard to communicate it or advertise it when you're trying to push it, push a dog on somebody. I almost feel like there's no way that you can know. And a lot of, and I I also do believe in 
the strength of individual relationships. I, you know, people say like, I'm a, like I say, I'm a dog person. I really am. I love dogs. I feel like dogs see me and they almost always understand it because they gravitate to me. And mm -hmm. even when I like, so there's a dog that I take care of sometimes for, uh, for friends, this, he's a sort of mutt, um, uh, terrier named seven and, you know, seven just took to me instantly in a way where like, you know, I was hanging out with them last night and seven's mom was like, I'll just never forget the first time you took him out of our house and into an Uber. And he just didn't even look back. He was like, later. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, they understand that the energy and and yeah. they, they're like, you're, yeah, you're my person. I got this, you know? Yeah. And so sometimes there's that. And then also there is the individual dog factor. And it's really important, I think, not to create this monolithic impression of dogs, not even by species or breed, but just dog to dog. Every dog is going to have that different personality, just like every person is going to have that different personality. And when the personalities mesh, it's undeniable. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that many times on the show that, you know, when somebody does go to wherever, you know, more times than not, it's a rescue and there's all these dogs, they somehow there's a connection, you know, there's a chemistry, there's just this unspoken thing that connects them to a certain dog out of out of a mall. It's very, I mean, it's a, it's a very magical thing if you've ever experienced it. And I feel very, you know, I think for me, obviously, I have a bigger soft spot in my heart for rescue dogs. I have a very typical story of just sort of having a shitty childhood and feeling like, akin to the rescue dog <laughs> yes yes you know <laughs> being the kid that was like you know on the street when he was 16 and and just being like okay what's who's gonna rescue me yep uh and so bozy bozy was one of those dogs too who when we got him he was an older dog which was another thing so we don't know ultimately how old he was when he passed the vets were more like we think he's probably 15 16 years old at this point but when we got him, vets were like, uh, he could be anywhere from six to 12. Oh so gosh, it was really yeah. unhelpful. <laughs> but he, we knew he was older. We knew he had a hard life. He had, you know, scars all over his body that we didn't know where they came from. He had frostbite on his ears. So clearly he was, you know, freezing somewhere. I know this, his, his sort of story was that he was in Indiana and um, the person who owns the rescue where we got him was visiting family in Indiana and she it was Christmas time and she was just like I have to go to a shelter I just have to sort of see and um she wasn't going to take anyone home but Bozy was literally on the kill list and yeah. she was like I can't I can't <laughs> and so she took one dog and it was Bozy mm -hmm. um and you know how amazing is that that you know we got like eight years with this dog that weren't promised to him like yeah. that's amazing or us for that matter. I mean, we were in as enriched as anything. So, yeah. Well, you were starting to say that you feel like his presence is still there and you were crediting it to social media. Well, I mean, I can, I can sort of finish the thought. I, I feel like one of the biggest sort of boons of social media, cause it's a terrible place to be, but <laughs> um, you know, when you're me, and you're sort of a public figure and you need to keep some kind of social media presence for whatever reason, you're always looking for ways to make it better. And right. obviously sharing Bozy with the community of followers that I have, it was, it was, it was a couple of things. I mean, one, it was that like, I love my dog and I want y'all to see him. Um, but two, it was also like, I wanted people to see like an older dog. I wanted people to see a rescue dog. I wanted people to like become attached to him to the point where like, I really, like when Bozy passed, I really felt this outpour of grief, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, from this community of people who had never met him. And even there's a, there's a show on this tour that we played. We did a tour Thursday, the band that I'm playing in, we did a tour around the time of the first anniversary of Bosey's passing. And I created this image that I taped to like a piece of gear next to my amp. 
Um, and it had like an image, it was like a illustration of a dachshund and it said Bozy NYC on it. And, you know, um, this videographer filmed one of our shows in Philly and uh, it's Hate Five Six is, is the videographer. And so if you find that show and you go to the end, he the end of the video is him close up and it's Bozy. That's awesome. <laughs> and it's because he followed me on social media. He knew how important Bozy was to me. And he was like, I want this to be the tribute to Bozy. And, you know, he had never met Bozy. So it was like kind of those things really, you know, they're dogs are community builders, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and they, you know, I really felt that and it made my social presence more fun. And, yeah. and I still love posting pictures of him. And, and, you know, whenever I, get a memory where I'm like, Oh my God, I have to find that picture. It's he's still alive as far as, far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I was happy to see that you had a couple of posts that said you're finally in a place where his memory brings you more joy than anything else. Absolutely. And that his memory is not a ghost that comes to haunt, but a dear friend who comes to visit. So, mm -hmm. you know, reading that, I was like, perfect. This will, this is the theme of the show is a, a visit with Bozy. Yeah. Where did he's the name a, come from? Oh, um, okay. So there's, there's actually a weird story about that is years ago, this was probably 2004 or five. Um, so I had just moved back to New York from California. I'm from New York, but I lived out there for a little while and I got my own apartment in Chelsea and there was this little, like, it wasn't a rescue. It was probably like a breeder, but it was a, it was a, pet store near my house that I used to just go in and say hi to the dogs <laughs> because mm -hmm. I just, I love dogs. So one day I walk in and there's just box of dogs, just kind of like, you know, pick me, pick me. And there's this dog who's just in the corner and he's a dachshund and he's just chilling and he's just looking at me and all the other dogs are freaking out. I'm standing over the box. They're all like, pick me, pick me, pick me. And he's just like looking at me like, what's up and of course I pick him <laughs> and I start you know I bring him out of the box I'm playing with him we're having fun I developed this attachment to him over a month maybe longer I started going into that store every day or every other day and at some point I didn't I don't remember what his name was but I didn't like it and I started calling him Bozy. and so I called him Bozy because I've always been a huge Oscar Wilde fan and Bozy was the nickname that Oscar Wilde gave his lover Lord Alfred Douglas okay. and I didn't know what it meant this is the thing I just thought it was a cute name and it sounded like a dog name so anyway that Bozy eventually gets adopted and my heart is crushed because I would have adopted him but my landlord wouldn't allow it right so I was just crushed and I never forgot him. And I sort of like, like that Bozy is a ghost to me. <laughs> and so I told my partner that story years ago. So when we got Leonard, I thought, well, maybe, maybe his name's Leonard. He kind of looks like a Leonard. There's a little <laughs> Leonard in him. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and my partner's like, no, his name has to be Bozy. We have to you know, like finish this circle. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, it took me a minute to really sort of accept that and, and, you know, look at Bozy as Bozy. And then I, but as soon as it clicked, it just clicked. And I was like, he is Bozy. You're right. You're absolutely right. So fast forward six months, a friend of mine in Scotland texts me, he sees pictures of Bozy on the internet. And he was like, I love that you named him Bozy. And I was like, Oh, like, are you into Oscar Wilde? I mean, he was just like a random straight <laughs> punk kid from Scotland. <laughs> right. And I was like, are you into Oscar? No, no. He's like, no, no, that's Scottish slang. And I was like, what for what? And he's like, cuddles. Uh, and I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> this is the best name ever. And so, that's so funny. Yeah, because Bozy was the cuddled dog. That's what he wanted all the time. Well, he he's <laughs> he loved being on your chest. It seemed like if you're on that your was, back, he'd go right on his chest. That was his thing. He it was either my chest or inside my armpit. Yeah, <laughs> but it was one of those two things. And it was he. Yeah, I mean, he always wanted to be close. He always wanted that sort of. Even when I would lie down, like at night, he would. He's a sausage dog, right? He has this long body, and he would position his body so that it was exactly parallel with mine, touching mine the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. 
So, Gotta love yeah. that. It's very much like my dog. <laughs> um, so you had a quote about he taught you how to make he taught me how to take myself out of the center and to put mm -hmm. others others needs first. Did Bosey teach you that or did you, previous dogs teach you that? Because you did mention you had another dog before that. So, yeah, I would say so the other dog I had before that I was younger and more carefree and sort of like that dog did whatever the fuck he wanted to do kind of thing. Right. Like I, I wouldn't even say that I was a particularly great care caretaker. Okay. Um, I think, you know, getting Bozy as an adult and sort of, you know, it, it, it felt a lot more like what I imagine parenthood feeling like uh, in the sense that like I have friends who've had children and they freak out and they're like, you know, like once the child's born, you're like, oh, my God, my only job in life is to make sure that this child doesn't die. <laughs> right, right. And and I had godchildren as well over the course of time who I remember babysitting them and being like, oh, my God, like anything could happen. Like, you know, really being obsessed and paranoid that like I'm given this great responsibility. And I think with Bozy, when he came into the picture, I maybe I was sort of having like a weird parental Jones where like <laughs> maybe, you know, like my biological clock was ticking and I felt like, oh, a child has been born into the world. <laughs> yes. Yes. And and I I looked at him a lot different. I really just started to look at him in this way where I really did feel like I have a responsibility to you. You know, like I am literally what you have in this world. And so if I don't take this responsibility seriously, I'm letting you down and I'm giving you a bad life and you don't deserve that. And so I took it very seriously. I really, and also just the fact that there's a lot of practical needs, obviously being fed, being walked. It's like those right. things that, that like, they just need to be done. And it didn't matter if I was, if I didn't feel like it, <laughs> right? right? Like yeah, he yeah. has to go, he has to go. <laughs> so I, I sort of loved being taken out of that self-absorption that you know if we're real most artists have yeah <laughs> and it, it forced me to to be in a position where i wasn't in the center and that actually was an amazing place to be and maybe it was a place that i hadn't been in, in a long time that now i i cherish and I, I miss to be honest yeah did people see a noticeable change in you after before and after the dog like friends or you know john I feel like, yeah, I was going to say, like, if anybody would have seen anything, it would have been John, definitely, because it's weird, too, to say this. But so I've I've suffered with depression my entire life. I was like diagnosed with major depressive disorder when I was like a teenager. And I'm not saying that dogs are better than antidepressants, but <laughs> but there is absolutely something wild about being depressed and having a dog come up to you and just look you in the eyes and it's kind of just this weird profound thing that at least for me like would snap me out of things because mm -hmm. i would just be like yeah what the fuck am i why am i tripping like right right <laughs> i hear you dog because dogs are really you know there's a okay so i i'm also i study zen buddhism right with a teacher and one of the first zen koans that you get um, is this entire story about a monk and a student where the student comes and asks the monk, does the dog have Buddha nature? And the monk says, Mu. And so Mu is this word that sort of means yes and sort of means no and sort of means both and sort of means neither. It's the most ambiguous word that you can answer. And so in a Zen koan, your, your idea is not to solve a koan, it's not a puzzle. Your idea is to work with it. Okay. And I loved, first of all, the fact that this very primary fundamental koan was about a dog. <laughs> but when I think about Buddha nature and when I think about the dog, for me, there's so much there because the dog always lives completely without fear of the past or the future. The dog is just completely there mm -hmm. all the time in the present just being like, hey, why are you depressed? We're here together. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and and it's true. Like I could it's almost like you could hear Bozy 
like talking me out of it and just saying like, what are you doing, man? We're chilling. This is great. Life's great. (laughs) Don't worry about these things that haven't happened, you know, and that's, that's a dog way of being. And so that really taught me a lot as well. I think like we could all stand to be a little more like dogs. <laughs> yes, for sure. You had mentioned in a post, uh, wisdom of a dog. I'm wondering, are there any other anecdotes or words to live by that you've kind of strung together from, you know, living with Bozy all these years? I mean, I, I would say not, I mean, not so much more than, than sort of like what I was just talking about. I do feel like uh-huh. that, that particular thing, that particular idea of like radical presence is, is the thing that I think I love the most about being with dogs in general, but Bozy particularly, you know, I, I, when I talk about Bozy, Bozy's last day, right. That was a really difficult, obviously such a difficult time. He had been suffering from dementia. I didn't know dogs could get dementia. So part of me was blaming myself, like, oh, there are things I could have done. You know, there's food I could have given him or toys he could have played with or things that could have improved his cognitive health. I'm an idiot. You know, it was really, you beat yourself up always. But that last day, it was so wild to me because it felt like Bozy knew and was just like, he hadn't been that chill in like a year. Like for the entire last year, the dementia would take over and he would just howl in the corner or he would get quote unquote trapped under a chair where like, you know, he'd just look frightened like, oh my God, I can't move. And you're like, yeah, you can just move your legs. Come on. (laughs) Um, You know, and it was like all these things that were just so heartbreaking until finally, you know, he had a seizure And then it was really scary and we took him to a neurologist and then, you know, we realized that we had limited time. And so on that last day, I remember we gave him a huge dinner, just like everything he could have wanted. And he was (laughs) so happy. And then in the morning, we gave him this amazing breakfast with pancakes and scrambled eggs and bacon. And like, I mean, he was an old dude with dementia, but he was living life. Yeah. And he didn't whine once he didn't howl once after breakfast he just came and sat on my lap when we drove to the vet he sat there quietly and he had been having major trouble sitting in cars for a year and was just completely calm and you read these stories about or this anecdote about how when when a wolf knows it's gonna die that it separates from the pack and and usually lies under a tree or something by itself calmly Mm -hmm. and just knowing that it's going to come and there was something about that that kind of was like oh my god Bozy's bringing out his inner wolf right now I think he just knows and he's basically like being very chill and just saying thank you we had an amazing time gosh I mean that must have is as difficult as that is that must have helped you cope you know to know that the dog was in a peaceful state and until the end I mean I literally, if, if that day had gone any different, I don't know, like if I would have peace, right? Like if he had resisted in some way, if he was like, no, no, you know, like, I I mean, I don't know, like what people's experiences are. I, I tried to prepare myself. I watched YouTube videos one night and I was like, why am I doing this? Oh my God. Like, there's no way to prepare yourself. Don't do that. (laughs) I was going to say that. That YouTube rabbit hole is dark. (laughs) Don't do it. Just just be there. Experience it. Be there for your dog. He or she knows that you're there. That's all that matters to them. Yeah. Well, before we I wrap it up with five quick questions, I call the zoomies. But before we get there, I wanted to talk a little bit about another post or just a term used, and that was the cult of dachshunds, dachshund owners. <laughs> yes. And I was curious, are there certain tenets to that religion? <laughs> um, it's, it's a very secretive religion. <laughs> I feel like honestly, the cult, the way I see it and the reason why I call it a cult is because when you see a dachshund owner or when you are a dachshund owner, there is this in- intuition about identifying each other and sort of like free range. So for example, like if I'm walking down the street and I see someone with a dachshund and I say, 
I used to have a dachshund, you know, he recently passed. It's like they give me to the key to the country and I'm just like, oh, here, here's my dog. Play with him, <laughs> you know, like because they understand there's this there's something there's something about the dachshund itself that is a very unique characteristic, which is that a dachshund is both the most stubborn dog in the world and the most loyal. And so what I love about that is that no matter how you try to train your dachshund or teach your dachshund, they're going to resist. They're going to put up their fists and be sort of like, mm, you know, about it. And like, right. no, <laughs> and you're going to watch it, but you're also going to watch their heart melt to the point where they have to face this dilemma, which is, do I remain stubborn or do I please my person? Right. And they always choose please my person in the end. <laughs> and it's the most beautiful thing. And I think like when you experience that, you just want to share that with everybody who's ever experienced that. And and so I've made amazing friends who just literally like we were walking down the street. And we're like, oh, we both have dachshunds. Now you're my best friend. Right. And literally like I still have many, many friends like that. <laughs> well, I saw that the person that gave you the tattoo of Bovzi's name was a, he's an owner. Yes. <laughs> and also you had, um, or was it the, uh, the trio, the Cooper Bark trio? Yes. Yeah. That, I mean, and what's crazy is there's only one left now. Oh, Frank, okay. uh, Frank passed, Bozy passed. So there's Lenny. He's still holding strong in San Francisco right now. Um, <laughs> but like, that's a, you know, that's a great example. I was just in San Francisco and I went to Presidio Park with Lenny and we had a great time and it was, you know, it's like that, that bond also, you know, Lenny used to stay with us and we always called him Bozy's cousin. And it, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's weird. I mean, even the other dogs that I take care of sometimes, you know, that aren't dachshunds, it's, it's, it's really not the same. <laughs> no yeah. offense to the other breed owners, but <laughs> I have a, I have a type. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, go to the zoomies. The first question is, do you kiss Bozy on the mouth? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I had, I mean, I asked that question to everybody, but there's no photographic evidence of that. There might be a close evidence of it, but there's not a, yeah. a very overt kiss picture in your in your feed. And your feed is over a thousand photos long. So right. There's not um I think probably because whenever I've taken pictures of Bozy, it's like I'm taking them. So it's really hard to yeah. get it at the right yeah. moment. I think <laughs> there's one where his tongue is like a foot outside of his mouth yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like trying to lick my face. Um, but that's as close as I was ever able to get. <laughs> okay. Question two is, did P Bozy have a theme song? Was there a song that was his only? You mean that I wrote? <laughs> either, well, either, either, either you wrote or just a, a, Bozy a popular had... song that was out there that always seemed to personify who he was. No, I, I've always joked that, um, I have like an album's worth of songs that I've written that I would sing to Bozy. <laughs> so yeah, Bozy had, I'd say like probably there was one song that I sang to him more than any of them. Um, and it's a super silly song, but it was just, it was a song where like he could sit on my chest and I would hold up his paws and I would sing it and we would just like dance and it would just, it was cute. And maybe someday I'll record it. <laughs> okay. All right. we'll, we'll, we'll keep our eyes and ears open for that. Did Bozy ever go to gigs or tour? Um, no, but it was funny. I was just last night I was talking about. Um, so the first dachshund that um, I had, me and my roommate, we sort of lived with this dachshund together and she was Japanese and she named him Atoma. But I was like, that doesn't sound like a dog. So I named him Muchi. <laughs> And Muchi is this Hindi word that means dirty. It's so they they call dogs Muchi in India. And so, <laughs> so I started calling him Muchi. So anyway, I used to take Muchi to CBGB's um, and we would hang out outside, but we never went inside. But he would always just love the attention and all the kids hanging out and like petting him and all that stuff. That's that's probably as close as I've ever been to taking dogs to a show. <laughs> okay. Well, question three is if if uh, you went on tour with Bozy. What would he insist be on the rider? 
Oh God. Um, you know what? Bone Bozy really liked his greenies. Oh, okay. He was like, um, like that was a thing where like that was like his ultimate treat because he when he was found, he didn't have that many teeth and he had to get more teeth taken out because his oral health was just not good. Right. Um, and so greenies would take him a long time to get through. So for him, it was like, oh, my God, this is the best treat ever. It lasts forever. Right. <laughs> and he would just sit there and it was very much like a like a don't <laughs> with me while I'm with my bone kind of situation. Right. OK. OK. <laughs> Question four is, did you use a dog voice to speak to him or <laughs> did you give him a dog voice to kind of personify him to others? Yes. <laughs> yes. On both, on both occasions. Um, he had a voice. <laughs> um, mostly I used it to antagonize my partner. <laughs> and what, kind of, what, I mean, I don't, I, I don't, it's funny. I always, I always say, I don't want to embarrass you. You know, you don't need to, I won't ask you for it, but you're a performer. Um, can you uh, well, describe so it? Voice, I mean, was it a, was it gruff? Was it what kind of personality it, were you taunting your partner with? So it's funny because you know you name Bozy after like a English aristocrat, and you think that that would be the, his voice, <laughs> but I sort of made him sound like a weird, like almost like a Raggedy Andy character, like oh okay. my god, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because Bozy was a little bit goofy, and and so it felt a little bit goofier, and and that was the voice, but. When you have a goofy voice and you're antagonizing someone with it, it's gold. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. And last but not least, is there a dog organization or service that uh, you'd like to give a shout out to for just doing doing good for dogs? Yeah. Um, so my one of my favorite Instagram accounts actually is Little Paws Dachshund Rescue. Um, they're not in New York, unfortunately. So it's like I see all these dogs, and I am personally starting to open myself up to finding a new dachshund and adopting again and they they have so many good ones it's really hard to find rescue dachshunds is, yeah. is sort of the thing um yeah. they're not really a breed that just runs out on the street and hangs out but i have seen some interesting like mixed rescues and i'm i'm fascinated by the dachshund pit bull Mm. um <laughs> i've, so I've seen that... a, i've seen a couple of pit bull mixes that have been very big with very short arms and legs right. it's 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 basically pit bulls that have sausage bodies and yeah. uh and so there's something about that that's like appealing to me in some way i don't know um yeah. i mean i like a good chewini too but uh <laughs> but yeah, it's the the dachshund rescue situation is very dire and i feel like little paws are really like they're, they're out there finding them. Yeah. And so I, I absolutely want to shout them out and support that. Okay, great. And I, I love your answer. I was going to ask, are you in a place yet where you can bring another dog into your life? It's still a little rough because I have to really make sure that my partner's good with it because I'm still touring a lot. And I, I realize that it can be a lot to be a single dog dad. Mm -hmm. um, I've had situations where john was out of town and then i got really sick like i got shingles once when he was out of town and it was insane it was horrible but again this is where you know that your dog is is your dog like bozy knew immediately that whatever was wrong with me was something different and he i mean it's weird to say like he took care of me but he did yeah. like he he didn't whine about like going out to walk like he walked whenever I could walk and he was fine with it. He, you know, he didn't bother me about food. He, he was just like, I'm going to hang out in bed with you until you tell me we're doing something. Yeah. And so that's, it's hard to be like, that's the kind of dog I want. Yeah. <laughs> you can't yeah. really order that dog up, but, yeah. <laughs> but I am going to be very conscious of, of the connection. It's very important to me to have this connection. Yeah. Have you considered fostering or have you fostered in the past? Um, I want to foster, to be honest. I, I think John has resisted that. I think he feels like if we foster a dog, I'm just going to be like, I want him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's a good way to, it's a good way to see if you have that chemistry. Right. I mean, yeah. the thing is, is that there, there are very few dogs, honestly, if, and I get what John's saying. There are very few dogs where I feel like zero chemistry with. So yeah. I can see 
if I pick a foster and I'm like, yeah, you know, in my brain, I'm thinking like, we're going to be best friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny at the shelter, there's always one dog when I, when I'm leaving, there's always one dog with really sad eyes. And I'm like, all right, I, I'll take one more out for, for a, a walk. And he ends up being the one that like, you know, I'm flying, you know, in air and he's dragging me through the woods. So it's always like, ah, he got me. <laughs> he suckered me in. But I mean, also best part of his day. He's so psyched and he's so yeah. happy that you took yeah. him out. So, <laughs> and I, I try to remember that too. Even when you get like, there are days where you're just like, I don't want to go outside. It's raining. It's, you know, or like whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. And, but it's like, no, I mean, literally you're like, this is literally the best part of his day. He gets the sniff gets to hang out, do his business, you know, like he's with his person. I love that. I mean, there's a point where I internalize that completely. And now it's like, this has to be a joy for me as much as it is for him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, Norman, thanks so much for giving me your time and taking me through Bozy. I'm very, I'm so happy I found you and, uh, you know, got to hear about him and I'm, I'm sorry for the loss. I know it's been two years, but you know, like I said, when you do look through your Instagram, it's 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 full of him and he brings so much life to the Instagram experience. Um, and just thank you for that. Thank you. I, I mean, honestly, the opportunity to talk about Bozy in this kind of way, I am just so happy to have had that opportunity. So thank you. Oh, you're, you're welcome. I'm glad to hear that. All right. Thank you, Norman Brannon, for coming on the show and sharing the life and times of Bozy and the other dogs in your life. The second coming of Norman's influential hardcore fanzine, Antimatter, is available to all at antimatter.substack.com. The dog organization Norman chose to put a spotlight on is Little Paws Dachshund Rescue, whose goal is to identify abandoned, mistreated, or homeless dogs and oversee their treatment and well-being while working to find loving owners for those in their care. To adopt, donate, or volunteer, go to littlepawsdr.org for more information. Thank you for listening to the show. Lend us your support by following us on Instagram at Rocker Dog Podcast, where you'll find pictures and videos of our guests and their dogs. Please join us again next week for another great new episode featuring two legends in the folk slash country slash Americana world. One who drops so many F-bombs, we're going to start a swear jar to raise money for my local shelter. So be sure to join us for that one. It's actually very funny, very entertaining. All right, my dog is giving me the wrap-up sign. We'll see you next week. 